false advertisement. There's nothing in these eggs. Nah. What exactly are you trying to do here? Are you ready to dye eggs? Hello. Are you ready oh, to oh, dye I, eggs? I, I, yes? Excellent. Oh, okay, it was a joke. That's why you're so adamant about it. Hello, I'm here too. I, I, no, I was- <laughs> Welcome to the show. Somebody's about to crack. It's not all it's cracked up to be. The set stuff for today wasn't too expensive, was it? Would you say it was a little cheap? Speaking of cheap, you know what's not cheaply made? Our merch. Like, <laughs> Although you cut the sleeves off. Hello! Welcome back to What's the Safe Word? I'm Am. I'm Miss Christopher. And today, we are hopping down QA lane. Hopefully, not hopping or jumping to conclusions. We are going to crack down, tell some yokes while we answer your questions. Because Ooh. what is it today, Daddy? Uh, it's Easter. And you know what that means. Eggs, hatching, laying, surprises. And hopefully nobody dies. And something rises. Oh, well that's three days after technically. Like, yeah, I, I never understood the whole Jesus becoming a zombie thing and coming back to life or like <laughs> the fact that rabbits don't lay eggs. Yeah, that was always a weird one as a, and did you ever eat the ears off your chocolate bunny? That's the first thing I did was eat the ears off the chocolate bunny and it felt so wrong, but so good. Or the fact that in Australia, they have what's called the Easter bilby. Do you know what that is? It's like a kangaroo, right? I think so. Yeah. And then in France, they have a bell that delivers Easter eggs. I don't understand why all these things Wait. are delivering eggs. Why does the bell deliver eggs? I don't know, but if you haven't rung the bell, make sure you ring the bell. <laughs> if you like ringing bells. And in the tradition of uh, celebrating a holiday, but also just answering some of your questions, we're going to be dyeing some eggs today. Daddy, have you ever done this before? This is my favorite thing, actually. I used to do this as a kid all the time with my family. Would you say it was all it was cracked up to be? Sometimes if you drop it. <laughs> no, 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 we're not dropping any of the questions or the eggs. But we're gonna answer some of your questions today. We're gonna have some fun and hopefully we aren't gonna dye anything that we shouldn't. Now, I did it a little differently because I filled the cups higher than they're supposed to be because I hate when you put an egg in there and it only dies half the egg. Did you ever do that? It's a very oddly specific problem, but no. <laughs> that was my also, dad What is, what is, what is? Come on! Like a little bubble wand. Now personally, I always found that Easter was kind of a little sexual in that you had rabbits laying eggs, there's a lot of like rebirth, there's a lot of like birth in itself. And so it was always, especially when I was growing up Catholic, a big like celebratory, almost sexual thing. Yeah, and everyone wore their Sunday finest, so they had like those white see-through pants. That was my favorite thing of Easter. And as you can see, we wore our finest today and <laughs> left my sleeves at home. Look, my bunny hops. Okay, Hop. did you, did you, how much coffee did you have? <laughs> my bunny's working. Let's get to the first question, which comes from Pup Panta and asks, any tips on discussing discreet kink when living with a non-kinky person? Discreet kink when living with a non- So you don't want the person you're living with to know that you're kinky? I mean, if you're living with someone, they're gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. They know. But also, I guess just like tips and tricks to like keep it, that it's not in their way. Like I, I know that when I used to live with people that were kind of kinky and new, but I also just didn't want to make it inconvenient. I would always like play music whenever I had a, a friend over or. Yeah, so I guess you would have to do your kinky play in your bedroom and yeah, keep the volume up on the radio so they don't hear the screams. Um, screams. Maybe put a towel around yourself if you're wearing leather jock straps and harnesses if you have to run down the hall to use the restroom or something. But why hide it? They know. Yeah, I think that you're fine being yourself. And if you're living in a household, it's always gonna be better if you can be a little bit more open. You don't have to have the whole 50 shades of gray talk where you're laying down every single shade of gray, but letting them know what you're into sexually, especially if you're gay or queer in some way, something tells me they're gonna be okay with that so long as you have the communication. And that doesn't mean you have to parade around the house in your fetish gear, dusting rope bunnies with your little chickies in your <laughs> leather maid's outfit. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of eggs, Daddy, do you want to do you want to start us out? Yeah. Teach me the dying of egg ways. So my favorite thing to do is you have to put a stripe on an egg. Okay. You dye the entire thing in a light color first. Okay. It's gonna need to sit there for 30 minutes, and then you hold it with the egg thingy majigger, and that's the technical term. Yeah. Mm. Into a darker color. Okay. Great. But while that one's dying, I'll start. And then this was always the problem. Will the egg fall ah. off your dying thing? Oh. And you have to be very steady. It's like holding a marshmallow close to a flame. What's the next question? What? 
The next question comes from Sanguine who asks, do you have any suggestions for making someone more comfortable around talking about sex in the first place? My current partner was raised very conservatively and finds sex super hard to talk about. I mean, ultimately you're with someone because you love them and you want to have a relationship. And so it's always best to kind of approach a kinky or just sexual related topic in general, just being like, this is what I'm into. This is why I like it. This is why I want to do it with you. And kind of start that conversation with your own perspective and then maybe have them open up. And make it sound fun and like you want to include them. And so that it's something fun they get to do with you, even though they may think it's weird, show them why it's not and how fun it can be. Exactly. Like for instance, when daddy said, let's dye Easter eggs and answer questions for Easter, I was kind of like, eh. and then he told me it was one of his favorite things to do during the holiday season. And then he told me how much fun it was. And while I'm not having tons of fun just yet. Ooh, that's ooh. a nice yellow. Oh, you're gonna choose the furthest one away from you. <laughs> so you're gonna hold it steady. <laughs> hold it steady. Stop it. Stop. I'm gonna. The next question comes from Nutbuster. Nutbuster. Come on. <laughs> Any advice, or do you know where to get those egg laying toys to get some Easter bunny realness? What's an egg laying toy? Well, actually, Daddy, if you just bend over, I'll, I'll show you how how to how to put this in. Um. So you just stick eggs in your ass. Again, though, butthole, chocolate. I don't know. No, actually, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this all the way in now. Well, most of my dates are at a meatpacking farm. It's actually called an ovipository fetus or oviposition. It's where you put or you have <laughs> eggs laid inside of someone and then sometimes they stay inside the person or sometimes they actually then just, just get it, they, they let it out. They, they slowly let it out of the anal cavity. Like ping pongs? Pew, 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 pew. Is that what the Easter Bunny does? No, 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 no. <laughs> It's this fetish that's become more popular of late because of things like tentacle porn and because of like the Easter Bunny. What are you doing? I'm doing my stripe. There's already an egg in there though. So I'm not going all the way in. It's essentially a kink where eggs are laid in someone or you are doing the egg laying and there's an actual toy online where you can make gelatin eggs or use silicone eggs and it's a dildo that's hollowed out that you can actually push the eggs into the dildo and then kind of ease you know like you like you're squeezing it like you're you're just like slowly moving like it like toothpaste exactly into somebody's anal cavity that's the perfect Easter fetish. Exactly. But it's this weird kind of inhuman, almost like alien, you know, like the movie Alien, when they lay eggs and things. Yeah. <laughs> like, what doesn't scream Easter if not aliens and sci fi? <laughs> aliens squirting eggs out of their ass. <laughs> I'm definitely negative on the kink for myself personally, but I am positive that people are really into it because there's almost this, like I said, there's like this alien aspect to it, which is almost inhuman. And a lot of people kind of get off to that. I kind of get into it. That have, would be cool. Have you ever seen the actual porn? That no, but that? I want to now. <laughs> Keep that egg steady while you're watching people get their eggs ready. I want to do it with our Easter eggs. No, 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 no. Why? First of all, if you're going to put something inside your body, make sure it does not crack and it is not something that has got chemicals or vinegar and other other things like that. Ooh, vinegar could be fun though. No, 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 no. <laughs> so when you're using these squelchers, the, the ovipositories. See, everything just sounds s and me. Squelchers? I want a squelcher. <laughs> when you're using these toys, what they recommend is you actually do use the gelatin molds that they sell along with it. Because something with gelatin, even if you're not able to get it out of your body because the anal cavity can get very, uh, it'll suck it up and it won't let it out. I like when things suck up. See, look. Your stripes kind of. Your stripes kind of. Thanks. It's important to make sure that you're not putting things up the anal cavity that could get stuck. So when you're using the gelatin molds, that's just a safe way to make sure you don't get anything up there that you're gonna get trapped in your body. However, there are people that use silicone molds that you put in the vagina that actually will come out. So it's okay to put it in the front, but probably a good idea to make sure you're staying to the gelatin molds in the back. Got it. See, like tentacles are a big thing. Mm, tentacles are a big thing. Yeah. So the eggs are going in both ends. Yeah. Those are pretty eggs. Sometimes they're really pretty. Why are my eggs not that pretty? Well, you'll get there. I'm into it. I like it. Are you? That would be such a fun Easter thing to do. Have a boy hop around the backyard and pop out eggs. And then you have to find them. Oh, see, look. That's a pretty egg. Bend over. So I got like a little rainbow going on on this one. You like? I do. We should check your eggs now. Pretty and pink. Look at that. I'm an expert egg layer. That's excellent. So what I like about the OV community, which is people into the ovipository fetish, is that some people are really into the act of the laying. Some are really into the act of being like impregnated by the eggs or whatever's kind of invading. Yeah. And other people just kind of like the, the way that femininity and 
masculinity kind of mix. It's very much a, a kink that a lot of non-binary people, when I was doing research on it, were really into for that, that reason that it wasn't just one specific gender being played with. I can see that. Can you? I can see it. Yeah? Could you see it with your legs open and the well, maybe in the future we'll get one of these things and try it out. There's actually an entire site, it's called Primal Hardware, where W-E-R-E, -E, like a werewolf, yep. where this gentleman will make you a, an ovipository injector with any colors or shapes or sizes, different aliens. So if we want to buy something. Mm, we do. Anyway, next question. Our next question asks. Oh, that's pretty. I like that, see? Barely asks, any advice on how to overcome feelings of embarrassment or shame for being kinky? I think lots of people do because that's how we were raised. You just have to tell yourself, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people. And are you getting into my peeps? I'm trying not to make a peep. Continue though. People genuinely will treat you how you treat yourself. So if you tend not to be embarrassed by the subject matter, they won't as well. But if you come off as you are embarrassed by it, they're gonna be embarrassed for you. People? I agree. I think it's important to find people that you get along with, but also understand that your kinks are valid and everybody's got something they're into. If you think that your kink is weird, there's probably a lot weirder kinks out there and that is cool and fine by us and everybody should let their freak flag fly and uh, want to peep. And everyone has a kink, whether they admit it or not. That's true. And if somebody is out here making a peep about how weird your kink is, just imagine what they're into. Do you like peeps? I do. I like my peeps frozen though, because they're a lot chewier. Have you ever put a peep in a microwave? No, that happens. <laughs> Let's do it. You Stick around for the end card where we put a peep in the microwave and see daddy's reaction. <laughs> you know what I like? A good peep show. Next question though comes from Miss Jennifer who asks, are you still a dom if you haven't dommed someone or seen somebody in a while? So by saying in a while, that means you've done it before. So then yes. Of course, it doesn't matter how often you practice, you're still a dom. Yeah, even if you're only doing it online right now, that still counts and you're still having a dynamic that's set. I think that a lot of people are gonna come out of the pandemic with a little bit of like PTSD kind of around touching and being sensual and being just like loving with other people. And that's, I, I, I wanna make sure that people are super clear that like, while that sucks, it's absolutely a normal reaction because we've been so deprived of all of these feelings and emotions for so long. And we've been conditioned to be scared of each other at this point. Ah! Ah! Some more than others. Ah! <laughs> Don't you make a peep? Did you die of peeps? Oh, oh my God. Did you ever play Chubby Bunny as a kid? Probably not. That, wouldn't that be better with peeps? Because they're actual bunnies. <laughs> no. I've got a question. Oh, <laughs> gonna ask if that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say yes. We'll just let that soak. Okay. You're soaking in it, Madge. We'll let that <laughs> settle as we go to the next question. The next question from Blush asks, how do you go about being a dom through text or chat? Which I think is especially relevant during our COVID times. Look, mine has a nipple. Yeah, so doming through text or chat is actually kind of an art form because the dom genuinely has to come up with lots of ideas. So giving the sub tasks to do, reporting back. I like to give them like number games, like they have to count the demerits of every time they fucked up and keep track of that. And we all know how good you are at counting. This is why it's the sub's responsibility to do it. Subs like to have tasks, so you give them tasks to do. And right now we're doing some egg dyeing and it's going great. So how would you do it? I would be dominant, but I would tell them what I'm going to do to them so that they kind of get it in their mind, like the kind of scene that we're gonna have. And generally from there, somebody that has a specific want or need for a scene will kind of steer what you've already started driving a little bit. Like they'll kind of grab the wheel a little bit and just turn it just, just a little bit towards that one part of the scene or towards the other. Like give them options without them knowing that you've given them options in the text. Huh, not how I do it. <laughs> Instead of manipulating them and telling them what they're going to do and then miscount or or say, no, no, no. No, 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 no You no, only no, think no, it's no. manipulation because ah! there's that one time. Speaking of tasks, oh my God, we're almost done. I'm gonna try something a little bit brave yet controversial. So we're gonna dip it in the blue and then we're gonna flip it upside down and let it drip down. You're gonna flip it and reverse it? Yes, back to the middle and round again. <laughs> While we answer the next question from Pervy Curvy Pig. He said five times fast. Pervy Curvy Pig, Pervy Curvy Pig, Pervy Curvy Pig, Pervy Curvy Pig, Pervy Curvy Pig. Pretty good, right? Yeah. 
How many doms have a cathartic experience during a scene the same way that subs do? I think a lot of doms do because when you're in it, you're in it. You're feeding off the energy of the sub. So if they're floating and having an out of body experience, sometimes I do as well. And also you're so focused on what you're doing. It's a very mental thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's like a form of uh, just getting some some stress out, you know. Especially if you're doing anything with like vlogging, maybe you're doing some impacty play sorts of stuff. That definitely relieves some stress while also getting the other juices flowing. How's your dripping thing going? You're getting dye all over yourself. What fetish is that? Rolling in dye. There, there's you... some mess in gunge play, I'm sure. There's some do this. Are you dying to do it? How long have you been whisking that <laughs> joke together? <laughs> Just now. I think it's also important at this point to talk about the fact that doms also need aftercare for their scenes. I think all the time, whenever we talk about kink and play and sex in general, there is a lot more of a focus on the bottom because they're receiving or we have to talk about consent and how consent can be given and taken back. But we rarely talk about the same perspective from the other end. We always tend to assume that like the dom's gonna be the one that's abusive, but subs can also be abusive in bad ways if you're not careful about how you talk about your relationship and communicate. And and good doms that are putting in the work and making a scene flow and making sure all of your pistons Oops. are firing. Did you break another egg? Validation helps. Being thankful for it and saying, that was great. You blew my mind. You're doing so well. Exactly. Stroking. Stroking the dom. Dom stroking. Exactly. You're doing so well. Are okay. you wiping your hands? No. Want to pee? Here, here, here. Have a pee. Have a pee. I'm eating out the beep. All right, next question. The final question today that comes from I like things not safe for work says, any new discovered kinks over this last year? Ooh, that's a good one. Do you have any new kinks? I definitely got more into hypnoplay just because it's Damn. been so easy to do online and people have kind of flocked to it. You took mine because same, same reason. Uh, I had never done hypnoplay before. Yeah, it made it a little bit easier just to, to not only get into, but it kind of encouraged people to do it more because you were just online nonstop. I got into more online doming as well so like zoom calling a sub and telling them what to do and watching mm. so it kind of made my dom verbal skills better actually going back to one of our questions it made uh sexting and, and flirting via text a lot more fun because you had to get more creative i mean everyone now owns one of those little tripods for their camera Right. Or, or some sort of webcam because they live at home and they work from home. So like people have been a lot more adventurous in that way, which even if it's kind of caused us to be a bit agoraphobic in other ways, it's kind of changing the way that we interact with each other, which I think is interesting in its own respect. Yeah, everyone bought ring lights this year. And so now everyone's eyes look like there's an Easter egg in it, a white ringed Easter egg. Oh, when you edit this, are you gonna put an Easter egg in it? Look for the Easter Destroy egg. Destroy this. <laughs> delete all the footage. Look for the Easter delete egg. Delete it. We're done. No, nope, we're done. He's doing puns nonstop now. I can't deal with <laughs> I've cracked. I've laid an egg somewhere in this show. See if you can find it. My brain is now scrambled. I mean, I like excellent jokes. That's mine. You no, took it's not. I used excellent twice. Are you ignoring me? I used that first. What do you mean your joke? Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Foul. I'm gonna let you finish that egg and uh -huh. then we're gonna finish this episode. Are you gonna pay me for this? Give me the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> That's all folks. <laughs> but today's final question, Daddy, whether you're laying eggs. Ooh, that looks gross. I was trying to make a green one out of like blue. You made a black egg. How is that even possible? Uh, but whether you're laying the eggs, uh, dying the eggs, or plopping them out of your orifices, always have a safe word. And today's safe word, Daddy, is beep beep. Because put a peep in it. We're gonna go put some of these in the microwave. We're gonna see how they explode. We're gonna see if they oh. expand. I wanna freeze one and then put it in the microwave. Can we do that? Or put it in the microwave, then freeze it. Does it expand? Like many people, when you uh, turn up the heat, a little bit of expansion might happen. Look. Cute. But why is there hair on that one? A little pubic hair never hurt anyone. It's not that bad. It's kind of cute. Look at it. It's like 10 different colors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And today's episode is sponsored by us. We got a bunch of new merch, uh, some new designs down below, and you can get all these lovely mugs, this cute shirt, and much more on the safewordshop.com. Look, eggs. I like eggs. Eggs. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Oh, I want to say eggs. Look, 
That's pretty Eastery, right? Yeah. So hopefully you guys learned some things today. If uh, it wasn't all it was cracked up to be, or maybe you enjoyed some of the puns, leave a comment down below. And if you're in France and your bell lays eggs, ring that bell. And we will see you guys next time. What's the safe word? Bye. Bye. Are you gonna go explode the peep? Yeah, do you want to? Yeah. You keep, you keep touching your eggs like you do. I like my eggs. I like eggs. Eggs, I like eggs. We need to get you an ovipository. <laughs> so what you're supposed to do is put two peeps in the microwave facing each other with a toothpick in their hands, and they expand, and the first one to hit the other one wins. It's like jousting. All right, so you are the pink peep. I'm the yellow peep. Okay. That's you. Yep, right there, yeah. Okay, and then face them. Yep, and then just stick them in the microwave and put the, the timer on like, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Ready? Ooh, they're dancing. They're circling around. There they go. Oh, you're getting fat. Oh, oh you win! Oh, God. Oh, open that. <laughs> oh, you killed me! Puppy! What are you doing? Ew! We're becoming one. We're mixing together. Look, do... Mm. Mm. I mean, that is someone's fetish, but oh, no. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Give me, give me that. Mmm, mukbang. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Demonetized. Ah!